to me, I feel like that 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 was a way to shake up the genre and get people to focus on a really important story as history repeats itself with some of these themes of nationalism and complicity and all that. The first thing I want to ask was was to Tony and Joan, um, which is because these are are real people that you're trying to honor with this show. How hard is it to write in their voices and and make sure that they function as characters as well as, you know, human beings? It is not hard. I mean, it is what we do, right? Uh, We had a lot to draw on. We, you know, there's uh, uh, Otto Frank was sort of wise and 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 restrained, you know, and so you, we led with that. And I think you can see Liev's performance embodies that. Um, we wanted, you know, Meep was the most important character in that we wanted to show what it would really be like to be a young woman at that time doing this really scary thing. And I was once a young woman. And so I, I understand um, the nuance of feeling like, I said yes to this thing, but now I don't I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure I want to do it. We wanted to show all those colors. So that really led the writing. Susanna, I I got to see the first two episodes in a, in a screening. And the thing that struck me the most, especially like in the first one, was that there were moments that were just so unexpectedly funny. It was like, especially when Meep was meeting her husband and building their relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but as someone who has directed, you know, these amazing comedies and also done kind of darker films was part of the draw for you getting to navigate the kind of all spectrum, all, all ends of the the tone spectrum on this show. Yeah, definitely. That's something that I, I think I'm, I'm always drawn to projects where I get to do that too. Um, and I think this was, it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm especially post COVID, I think everybody sort of reframed their paradigm about what they what they want to do and how they want to spend their time and what's worth it. And everyone sort of had this like search for meaning in their lives, at least people in my world did. And, and so for me, that really came down to wanting to work on projects that contribute in some way to a cultural conversation or something in the zeitgeist, or just are, are participating in a dialogue with the world. And this was that, um, this was sort of a, a, a really deep way to look at history, but also to make it accessible through, humanity and moments of fun and humor and joy that are like part of life and have always been part of life. You know, like when I talk to my grandmother, who's a hundred, 101 actually, um, she has a really wry sense of humor and she had that in 1939 also. So what was she like in 1939? You know, she wasn't serious then and now she's a funny old lady, you know? She, so <laughs> it was, we wanted to show that, you know, what are, what were, what were people like her like then? And that was really, um, to me, I feel like that 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 was a way to shake up the genre and get people to focus on a really important story as history repeats itself with some of these themes of nationalism and complicity and all that. So yeah, I, I loved I loved working on the show. Everybody knows the name of, of Anne Frank, of course, but I think Meep Geese is not really a household name, at least up until now. Uh, why do you think do you have a theory as to why there hasn't been more just about her in, in general knowledge maybe? And then is that, I imagine that's a big part of why you all wanted to tell this story. Well, she famously was, uh, didn't want to have all this attention on her, hated being called a hero, always wanted to rightly so sort of talk about, um, you know, she did, she would say, I did what anyone would do. And, uh, what we felt is that the truth is not anyone would do it because not everyone did do it. And so we we were like, so why was she so instantaneously, uh, has unhesitatingly, why did she say yes? Who is this person? Um, and that gave us a chance to explore all sorts of things that once you look at them, you're like, oh, of course, that she and Otto were both immigrants that they shared that, that they shared language, that Otto and his family really used her as a way to understand this new country they were in. Not only the language, but the customs, and and Meep and Jan became their, as they referred to them, their Dutch friends, you know, really for their whole group of of German emigres. um, Meep and Jan were this kind of conduit. Um, And that created a closeness 
that, you know, we discovered that, that after the war, Otto lived with Mi Pinyan for the next seven years. So from the time she started working with him until that time, they became family. I think this is, this is my last one for you, but I know you filmed at least part of this in Amsterdam, uh, where I imagine you worked with, with local crews. Uh, did you have a feeling among the people that you worked with over there that, you know, this was a really important thing? Like, did you get a sense of, of their passion in, in helping to tell this story? Absolutely. People from the Anne Frank Museum, uh, uh, you know, everybody in Amsterdam, you know, there was just this excitement about that we were telling the story. Um, school groups come through the Anne Frank Museum now and people don't know the story. And so it's really, uh, there was a lot of support and excitement that we were revisiting this story and telling it in a new way. I think that's that's all the time I have with you all today. But thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much.